Hello everyone, welcome back to the Mystery Channel 33. I am here to help solve missing women, children, and men cases. So let's begin. This is by a young child named Madeline, Madalena, M-A-D-A-L-I-N-A, Kojokori, C-O-J-O-C-A-R-I. This is urgent, this is new, this is suspicious circumstances, and this is an active case. This is how she looks. She said she look, uh, she do look familiar, okay? Now the picture of her, like I seen her on Shop Junior, you can watch it on Max, okay? A lot of people, that's a lot of kids going missing. Okay, that's another, that's another picture of her. I'm hearing yes. Okay. Um, she has been missing from Cornelius, North Carolina, USA. I mean, that's not a real city in North Carolina. Nationality, American. Case entered June the 13th, 2024. So, last week, okay. Current classification, suspicious circumstances. Source of record, media. Okay, so they were suspicious about her. Okay, last updated is June the 13th, 2024. Or somebody in her family is. She is female, age when reported missing, 11 years old, age as today, they do not know, race, Caucasian slash white, hair color brown, eye color brown, height 14, weight 90 pounds, so they haven't been feeding her, last seen wearing, um, even if you, you still, I mean, you still gonna have to wait a little bit more at 11, Last seen wearing, last seen wearing a white t-shirt, so mad nutrition, okay? Last seen wearing a white t-shirt, jeans, jacket, and pink, jacket, and pink, purple, and white Adidas shoes. Distant features, none indicated. Medical look, none indicated. Details of disappearance. Madalena Coco Quarry was last seen by family or friends on November the 21st, 2022. Police and the FBI have not given many details about the investigation. School bus video with the last confirmed sightings of Madalena. Her mother said she last saw Madalena on November the 23rd, 2022, a day before Thanksgiving. So yeah, um, they gave her away, okay? But did not report her missing until December the 15th, more than three weeks later. Madalena's school sent a guidance counselor to the house on December the 12th to find out why the 6th grader had not been in class, according to police. No one answered the door, but Diana Coco Quarry went to the school three days later and reported Madalena missing. I'm hearing yes, okay? This, they went to the real parents' house, though. And then that when the, 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 the fake mo mother went to the school, okay? Diana Kokori said she and her husband, Christopher Palmetta, argued that night, and the next morning he drove to his family's house in Michigan to recover some items. Police said in an affidavit. That was November the 23rd, okay, so they wrote a report. And the, the child wanted me to say that, okay, my bad, okay, but I'm going to do what the child tell me to do, okay, period. The mother told police she looked in Madalena's room at about 11.30 a.m. the next day, but the girl was gone. Some clothes in her backpack were gone, too, according to investigators. Diana Kokori said she waited for her husband to return on November 26 to ask if he knew where Madalena was, police said. Okay, that's the fake mother, okay, right there, Diana. Christopher Palmita did not and asked the same question in return. Investigator said, okay, the fake dad, okay. Detectives asked Diana Kokori why she waited to report it Madalena missing. And I'm hearing she thought the real parents were going to do it, okay. And she stated that she was worried it might start a conflict between her and Christopher Palmita, the affidavit states. Okay, the, the, the fake mama, Diana, just put her hand over the little girl's mouth, okay, in spirit, because, you know, she on, so, okay, like that, telling her to be quiet, okay. According to search warrants, investigators seized two cell phones. Police also asked for a warrant for location data, call records, text messages, and other information off the phones. Authorities also searched the Corcory home shortly after Madalena was reported missing. The warrants are partially redacted. I'm hearing this. 
But the investigators do single out an area blocked off with plywood in the kitchen in the warrant application. Detective Nicholas asked about the area and Mr. Parmita stated that they had planned to make a separate apartment. According to the warrant application, the mother told investigators that her family in Moldova said she would that she should call the police according to warrants filed in the case. She never did, okay? Now, yeah, she was, she was filing warrants on the real parents, okay? I'm let y'all know that. The search warrant said Parmita told investigators that he had not seen the girl for a week before he left to drive to Michigan. Search warrants released last year says Diana Kokori asked someone described as a distant relative for help to get her and her daughter away from Parmita. Police talked to their relative, the warrant shows. He stated that Diana Kokori and her mother asked him if he would assist Diana with smuggling her and Madalena, Madalena Kokori away from the residence. The search warrant states, okay? I, okay, I'm getting the, the warrant. Okay, they're going to be sending the warrant. Okay. A search of Diana Kokori's car last February found passports for the mother and daughter, along with work and education documents, according to the warrant. The man stated that she told him she was in a bad relationship with co defendant Christopher Parmita and wanted a divorce, the warrant said. Okay, yes, so the, so the little girl was dating the man, okay? Diana, and she didn't want that no more. Exactly. Thank you. Diana Kokori had a long phone call with the relative December the 2nd, according to the warrant. That was about Madalena was last seen in school before, but before she was reported missing. In reviewing this subject's phone records, there were multiple calls to phone numbers belonging to unidentified targets involved in ongoing T3 drug narcotic trafficking investigations the warrant states and that's for me okay i did lose the i did lose, I did lose the work on that i did lose the work on the drug force okay my bad y'all anyway not anyway the search for but that's a good thing though okay keep y'all safe the search for madalena now 13 continues who to contact if you have any information on the whereabouts of madalena kokori you are encouraged to contact the cornelius police department aid the people will answer 704-892-7773 or 704-892-1363. As for Detective Gina Patterson, she knows something about this, be sure to have the case number 22-121-5091 available as you would need it. Additional case number, name us, capitalize MP107929. NCMEC number 1468358. FBI information. FBI field office division is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Phone number is 704-672-6100. Special agent in charge is Robert M. D. Witt. Okay, that Apple dude. Okay, social networks and associated links provided. If there are any social networking accounts or other associated with the listing, they will be indicated below. Any case that has been approved for investigation by our team will provide a link to the fundraising page, to the FBI page, and the name must page. Be advised, if you see Madalena Kokori anywhere, please do not make contact. Call your local emergency number like 911 or the phone number indicated for law enforcement on this record and they will instruct you on what to do. The real ones. You can also let them know Madalena Kokori's name and that they will profile on this site. This way they can visit the profile and get information and file stuff for follow-up. And that for them, okay? You can always leave us a tip on what you saw by clicking the tip link in the menu at the top of this page. Notice, if the information contained in the in this missing person's profile is inaccurate, needs to be updated, or the person has been located, please let our staff know as soon as possible. Thank you. FBI releases new Madalena Kokori billboard, okay? If y'all like to help with this case, y'all can. I don't do it for the fame of the money. I do it because it's what I love to do. And to the real families of these victims, corporate America will set you up. Thank you, peace family.